when people watch my documentary, they all want to know, how did you make him so consistent? I'm here with the star of my VO3 documentary to show you how I generated consistent characters in VO3. They're going to want to know how you did this part too. Yeah, you're right. All right, this intro I did in Runway. VO3 currently doesn't support character references, which is the easiest way to create consistent characters. So I'm going to show you what I did. And the foundation came from my previous video called Wonderful Dream, which I created in Whisk. And the character from that makes a cameo in this movie. All right, so this is Whisk, and it's a tool from Google that lets you generate images, and then you can generate videos from those images. Um, this is what I made Wonderful Dream in. So this was the final prompt that I used um, to create one image of the character. So I didn't use it as a reference image, but I had to create an image of that character. This is what I used. So if we were using character reference images, we would expect this image to be what the character in the video looks like. But all we're doing really is taking these characters and then we're going to go over here to the subject and drag it over here. And why are we doing that? So it's gonna analyze this image and it's gonna give us a much more robust prompt. So this is what it sees. So this is kind of how the Google AI universe sees this image. So this became the basis for my prompt. I took all of that over to Gemini and I attached this photo and I said, here's a prompt I wrote in Whisk and I gave it my prompt. And then it said, here is the image description I received for this image. And I put that image description in there. And then I said, I would like a detailed VO3 description of just the man that I can use in a template for building prompts where I try to place him in a consistent looking way. So don't worry about the wardrobe, just focus on his face. Just to recap, here's the image. Here's the prompt I gave. Here's the image description from Whisk and give me something to use consistently. So I just asked, what do you think his name would be and how would you write a voice prompt for him in VO3? Because I want to have a consistent voice all the time. It thinks about it and says, Aram. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuss with you. Let's call him Aram. And then it gave me some options for his voice. Here's an example of the full prompt. So it gives you the physical description of him. And then when he speaks, this is, um, how he talks and I wanted a certain style. So I said, please provide a core prompt for Aram, core prompt for Aram's voice and a core prompt for a cinematic style shot in 35 millimeter. This is for the visual or physical description of him. This is what his voice would sound like slightly raspy and gravelly tinged with thoughtful curiosity. All right now do a prompt in a high end documentary style where he says, I used to wake up and worry about all of the things I needed to do that day. And it gave me this. I used to wake up and worry about all of the things I needed to do that day. So that's kind of it for consistent characters. Build a very detailed description of the character and use that in all of the prompts. Okay, so the trick is using the same detailed character description in the prompt, but how do you get rid of these subtitles? The other big thing that people have a problem with are the captions. So I heard on Discord that if you use Gemini to generate the videos, you don't see the captions. So I tried that in the first one, there were no captions and I was excited. And then I did it again and I got captions. So that didn't work. So I wanted to try an AI way to get rid of the captions. So even if VO3 generated it with captions, I can remove them with AI. So the first one I tried was Runway's in-painting tool. You've got a brush over here just go to the captions and just kind of wipe the brush over the captions and then they disappear. So you can kind of, in my opinion, you can kind of see a little bit when it adjusts there, but it's better than nothing. Like if you didn't know it was there, you might not notice. Like if you didn't know to look at that spot, you might not see it because you're watching him talk. So that was okay. But then I remembered that CapCut also has something similar. Um, I use CapCut. I think it's a great AI editor. So in CapCut, I just put the video on my editing timeline as I'm editing the video. I selected it, I went to video, and I scroll down here to where it says AI remove. I check that, it takes a second to recognize the video. I selected one of the brushes, so I did the quick brush. Just kind of like moved it over, and boom, it did that. So I put a little like box around it even. Then I said remove him, and look at that. 
like even in the collar, it didn't like, there's all of these lines in the collar and it, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. So I think that the cap cut one worked terrific. Okay, and then lastly, one of the problems I had with his voice was I think because he's described as an Armenian farmer, it would give him different accents. I had a lot of jobs. My favorite ones were being a butcher. And being a barber. And I really liked the voices that I created in the documentary interview styles. So I combined a few clips of him in order to get 10 seconds and exported just the audio. Then I brought that into Eleven Labs, and Eleven Labs will let you clone a voice with only 10 seconds of audio. I added the clip of him talking and generated a voice. It was called the Aram. So I exported all of the audio where he's talking and brought that into Eleven Labs and used their voice changer. And what I was hoping would happen is that he would lose his accent and it would sound like the same character. So that didn't really happen. Some of the videos had an accent to them, and so I just typed in and did like text-to-speech for those until I found ones that were close enough to the same timing where I could just drop those in. So it's kind of cheating, I know, in terms of like it's not the same generated audio, but um, it is generated audio. And I think that having a consistent voice as well as a consistent face really helps sell it. It's not that I dislike reality. It's just there's more than one reality. It used to be 100 credits for every video in VO3, and now you can actually do the fast ones. And some of the fast ones turned out just as good as the pro ones, in my opinion. Sometimes, too, the fast ones gave me like really weird, surreal things. Like this one was not what I wanted to do, but it was kind of uh, very bizarre. But like this one was done in the fast one. This is one of my favorite shots in the whole thing, and this was done on the fast mode. If you're wondering where to change that, you go here to the settings button and you can choose between three VO3 fast, which shows you it's 20 credits or VO3 quality, which is 100. So I hope this helps you create consistent characters in VO3. And if you enjoy this kind of thing, please subscribe because I like to make movies and I like to do tutorials about how I made those movies. All right, before I show your blooper reel, do you have any final wisdom? Is this where I'm supposed to say, smash that subscribe button? I don't think people say that anymore. All right, let's watch some bad generations. All right, thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in any of the tools that I use today, please check the description. I put links to different things in there. All right, go make some consistent characters in VO3.